normally the blood vessels that we have within our body are continuous tube like structures but at times due to multiple reasons these blood vessels can get damaged and that damaged region can lead to bleeding into the surrounding spaces thankfully the body has its own mechanism of dealing with this damage first the body causes a vasoconstriction to reduce the blood flow into that region and then the body causes accumulation of platelets into that region to form a platelet plug but this platelet plug is very weak and cannot stay over there for a long duration of time and hence the body causes accumulation of red blood cells in the platelet plugs and bind them together with strong fibers creating a meshwork this strong fibers that are present are known as the fibrin or activated factor 1 there are a set of chemical reactions which ultimately leads to activation of fibrinogen that is your factor 1 into fibrin which then forms the meshwork of fibers which holds the clot in this video we will discuss about this stepwise chemical reactions together known as the coagulation cascade the coagulation cascade has three arms it has a common pathway it has a extrinsic pathway and it has a intrinsic pathway we will first discuss about the common pathway in common pathway the ultimate goal is to convert fibrinogen into fibrin that is factor 1 in activated factor 1 this is done by activated factor 2 that is known as thrombin factor 2 is activated that is prothrombin is converted into thrombin by factor 10 and factor 5 so activated factor 10 in presence of a cofactor that is factor activated factor 5 causes activation of factor 2 that is conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and this activated factor 2 that is thrombin activates factor 1 that is converts fibrinogen into fibrin and this fibrin ultimately lays down this fibrous meshwork over here now the question is who activates factor 5 now this factor 5 is activated again by none other than our activated factor 2 and this much is known as the common pathway activation of factor 10 is the starting of the common pathway as well as it is the rate limiting step of the coagulation cascade this activation of factor 10 can be achieved by two different pathways it can achieved by a extrinsic pathway or an intrinsic pathway let's start talking about the extrinsic pathway why extrinsic because this pathway is activated by a trauma so severe that substances or tissues outside the blood vessel play a role that means there will be such a severe trauma that is the entire depth of the blood vessel gets damaged and enters a factor known as tissue factor from outside tissue into the blood vessel this tissue factor is also known as factor 3 this factor 3 generally remains within the tissues outside of blood vessel whenever blood vessel gets damaged and blood comes in contact with the external tissue then this factor 3 gets activated this activated factor 3 along with factor 7 which is activated by vitamin k together go and activate factor 10 this is known as the extrinsic pathway now we will come to the discussion of something known as the intrinsic pathway in case of intrinsic pathway also there is damage to the blood vessel wall but the damage is not for the entire depth rather there is just only the endothelial damage this endothelial damage exposes collagen calicrine and high molecular weight kininogen all these together activate your factor 12 and this activated factor 12 leads to activation of factor 11 factor 11 leads to activation of factor 9 and this factor 
along with fact activated factor 8 together go and activate factor 10. Now the question again comes who activates factor 8 again just like factor 5 it is also activated by thrombin that is factor 2 activated. So over here we have two very important roles of thrombin that you have to remember. Thrombin itself is in the common pathway and activating factor 1. It is also activating factor 5 and also it is activating factor 8 in the intrinsic pathway. At this point I believe you will definitely agree that the entire cascade or the pathway has got really really messed up and difficult to remember. Now how we can remember this pathway? Let's try it out. First of all, remember that the main hero of this pathway is factor 10. And everything is about activating factor 10. Based on that, we will first try to remember the common pathway. For common pathway, we will be remembering it by a simple math. We will remember 1 into 2 into 5 equals to 10. That means factor 1, then factor 2, factor 5, factor 10. These are the main figures or players in our in common pathway. Just see over here, factor 1, factor 2, factor 5 and factor 10. Now we will go to the extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway can again be remembered very easily. We will draw a line till factor 10 and we will write that 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. Factor activated factor 3 and activated factor 7 together is forming a complex which is activating factor 10 in extrinsic pathway. Now comes our intrinsic pathway. Now again in intrinsic pathway we will again draw a line and we will write down the numbers 12, 11, 9 and 8. After 10 comes 9, 11 and 12 and why 8? 8 was the left out number which was not used in the common pathway as well as in the extrinsic pathway. So we will have 8, 9, 11 and 12. Now where comes our factor 13? Factor 13 stabilizes the plug. So factor 13 comes at the very end where it stabilizes the plug or stabilizes the fibrin meshwork. So this is how we remember the entire coagulation pathway or coagulation cascade. In this, we have to remember two more things. Two very important elements play a role in this coagulation cascade. One is our calcium, another one is vitamin K. Vitamin K is very essential for two, seven, seven, nine, and ten. These pathways require vitamin K. That means activation of two, activation of seven, activation of 9 and activation of 10 requires potassium. Calcium is important for activation of 2, 9, 10 and stabilization of the clot. That means calcium will be necessary in activation of 2, activation of 9, activation of 10 and stabilization of the clot. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. I hope with this you have got a pretty good idea about the coagulation cascade.